Are you trying to figure out how to make decisions with your manufacturing or IoT sensor data? Well, this is the video for you. Welcome to this tutorial on Temporal Similarity Search with KDB AI. We're going to be taking in time series data. It could be manufacturing data, it could be IoT data, and we will be inserting that into KDB AI, storing it in a vector index, and then we're going to create a near real-time pattern matching pipeline. So what could you do with this? Well, understand patterns in predictive maintenance and quality control scenarios, just to name a couple examples, and this will help you to make data-driven decisions on your use cases. The idea is to take a specific pattern of interest and search for similar patterns across all of your historical and incoming data to find time windows displaying similar patterns. With this data, you might be able to predict when a machine will fail or monitor quality control concerns in real time. Let's get started, dive into the code, and by the end of the video, you'll have a great understanding of how to implement pattern matching on time series data using KDB AI. Let's go. All right, let's get started with the notebook. So to use this notebook, you will need a KDB.AI account. And if you don't have one, go ahead over to KDB.AI and click sign up free. And here you'll be able to put in your email and follow the instructions to get signed up for KDB AI. It's a great free trial option. Um, there's four gigabytes of memory, like 30 gigabytes of storage. You can have multiple tables, unlimited read writes. So as long as you're using a table, uh, you will be able to keep your instance. So check it out, easy, quick to get started. And there's all sorts of fun capability in there, including temporal similarity search, which is what we're gonna show right now. So. We're gonna load our sensor data. We just downloaded it. You can see it here in our data folder. And we're going to extract it from the zip file that it's in and read that in as a pandas data frame. So we'll extract sensor.csv and we'll just use pandas to read that in into our pandas data frame. And we can take a look. We have columns, including our timestamp column, as well as many different sensors available. Today, we're just gonna be looking at sensor 00. Next, we'll need to pre-process our data, do a little bit of cleanup, drop our duplicates, drop any columns that have unnecessary information, do a bit of data type conversion to date times on those timestamp column, and drop NAND values as well as reset the index. So a bit of pre-processing there, no worries. Take another look, and this is what we are dealing with. So let's explore the data for that number one sensor. And first, we will see that within that data frame, there is a column called machine status, and it will identify whenever a sensor is sensing a broken state. So if we can visualize this data, we'll see that the blue line here represents the sensor data, and the red X's represent when it's identified that that sensor is broken. So we can see the signal hovers around 2.5 or so, and then occasionally it'll drop. And that's where it's noted that the sensor is broken. So in this notebook, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this first instance of when the machine's broken, take that window and use that as our query vector to search over the rest of our data set and see, can we identify when the machine is broken in the other instances within the signal. So we're gonna use pattern matching and temporal similarity search to identify those instances of the broken machine. So to get set up, we're going to just be using the first sensor's values. So we'll create a new data frame called sensor zero underscore DF. This is what that data frame looks like. It contains an index, a timestamp, and the sensor values. And we can see that the sensor holds close to 200,000 rows. Now with Temporal similarity search, we will need to take all of these sensor values and bucket them into windows. And in this case, we're gonna create windows of the size 100 and a set size of one. So first we need to define these windows and then we'll need to extract the windows to create a new data frame that we'll be inserting into kdb.ai. So we can view this data frame that we just created and see that it consists of an index, a timestamp, and then our 100 data point window. So each timestamp, each minute, contains a window associated with it. 
We can also view when the sensors are considered to be broken. And in this data set, there's six instances when the sensor is considered to be broken. So we're going to be taking the window around this index and then using that as our query vector to search across the rest of our data set and see if we can identify these other instances of broken sensors. So let's get kdb.ai set up. Like I said, sign up for the account and you can then get your endpoint and API key. So we'll just need to input our endpoint and API key here and then connect to our kdb.ai session. The second option is to use kdb.ai server, which if you're interested in doing that, look at kdb.ai documentation to learn how to get that set up. Now we'll need to create a table schema to pass to KDB AI so it knows what columns to create. Now this may look a little complex, but not to worry. All we're doing is defining the columns that will be in our KDB AI table. So firstly, the index and the timestamp columns, those are both associated directly with the index and timestamp columns in our pandas data frame that we just created. Now where things get interesting is this third column, sensor 00. And this is where we hold our vector embeddings, or in other words, we hold our 100 data point time series windows for each timestamp. So what this consists of is a index that we define, which is the flat index in this case, the metric, which is Euclidean distance, L2. You could also use cosine similarity or dot product. And then, we use temporal similarity search transformed, which is the type TSC, and we define the number of dimensions. So this is the key here. We're taking our 100 data point time series window, and we're compressing that into eight dimensions. So there's a massive compression going on with temporal similarity search transformed, which is gonna be a massive memory savings in your vector database and for your entire application. So the beauty of this is even though we are compressing it quite a bit from 100 to eight dimensions, we're still able to keep the overarching original shape of that data. So we're able to do effective similarity searches on it. The key benefit is the memory savings here. So once we have this defined, we can then create our vector database table. And we'll just check to make sure that there's a table that's not already created that has the same table name. And if there is, it'll just drop it and then we'll create the table. So we're creating the table, we're calling it sensors and we're passing it that sensor schema that we just defined. Let's take a look at the columns in our table to see that they were correctly defined, index, timestamp and sensor 00, perfect. Let's insert our data. We're gonna insert our data in batches here of 1000 data points. So now that our data is inserted, let's go ahead and check out what our table looks like in KDB AI. And we can see that it was inserted successfully. We have our index for each specific row and each timestamp, and we have our vector embedding or our 100 point window. So now let's do our similarity search. And first we need to identify an example pattern to query. And in this case, we are gonna query the first of the timestamps of the broken sensors. So the index of the first broken sensor is 17125. So that's basically when this sensor was broken for the first time. So we're gonna take the window from just a little bit before that so we can capture what led to that sensor failing. So we'll say that we'll make our query vector index 17100. And let's view that query vector to see what it looks like. We see a drastic drop in value. And right around here is where sensor would be considered broken. We're gonna do a similarity search on our KDB AI table with this query vector and see, can we identify on the rest of the data set after this, all of the instances where the sensor was broken using pattern matching. And you can see it returned very quickly. We returned the top 100 matches and we have to see what the results look like. So let's take a look. The closest match is at 64,949, and then the second closest match is at 64,948. Re in reality, we only care about one of the matches. We don't need two windows directly next to each other. They may be similar, but we're looking for separate instances. So we're gonna do a little bit of filtering just to make sure that we're only capturing one and the most similar instance 
in any given time window. So we create a filtering function with the goal of identifying separate and unique patterns, not patterns that are extremely close together or overlapping, which basically would represent the same pattern. So to do this, all we're gonna do is iterate through all of our results. And if we have a closest match, any other closest matches within 200 data points of that will be discounted. So our first match is 64, 949. Our second match is 64, 948. They're basically a part of the same pattern because they're so close together. So we're just going to discount the second one. Now moving to the third one, 72, 845. That is a unique pattern. It's not within 200 data points of our first one. So that will also be added to our final results. 23, 540 also going to be added to our final results, not within 200 data points of any of our final patterns. But of course, going on to 23,539, it is within 200 data points of one of our final patterns. So this would be discounted. Now, after we go through this filtering process, we'll have our final results and they'll be listed right here. And this will show us all of the unique patterns that match the query vector. So if we compare these final matches to the broken sensors indexes, let's see how we did. 64,949. That's pretty close to 64,962. So we have identified this pattern. 72,845. Very close to 72,865. So we're able to identify this pattern. 23, 23 right here. So we successfully identified three and let's see, 142, 142, 110. Now 110 is not in our broken sensors. So we'll look at that in a minute and try to understand why. And then 116 is also there. So we, we did identify all of the broken sensors based on this pattern similarity search. So we were able to find all other instances of sensors with a broken status effectively. Now let's go look at the 110,000 data point and see why is that saying it's a match. And if we look at our data, the 110,000 point is right around here. So as we can see, we still get a pretty large drop here. So my guess is that it's still similar to the drop over here. So we're still picking it up and maybe this needs to be investigated as a potential area that we missed when the machine was broken. So let's visualize our patterns to see if we can understand why there were matches. And as we can see, the patterns all start around 2.5 or so, and then they drop off very quickly to between zero and 0 0.5. And this is where we're seeing these failed states happening in this area. So based on the pattern, we're able to identify when a sensor might be in a state of failure. So with that, thank you for walking through this notebook with me. And the last step is just to drop the table to save resources. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you think, and we'll see you next time.